Galatians chapter 5 and in verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth, lusteth, ugh, I'll get it out, lusteth, there you go, the King James word, against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. I want you to notice what he said. And these are contrary one to the other. That means they work against one another. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this service. Lord, I'm glad that I know you. And I'm glad that you can do anything that I can imagine today. Lord, I'm glad that you can save souls. I'm glad that you can pick us up. Lord, I'm glad you can deliver us out of the valleys and out of the fires of life. Lord, every one of us has a battle going on within our spirit today. And Lord, I know that you can deliver us from that battle. Lord, I know there's things that we want to do, but there's part of us that don't want to do it. But Lord, there's that part that's wanting us to do it. And Lord, we're warned today. God, I'm glad I've got victory in Jesus. I'm glad there's a way out today. I'm glad there's a way to win. Lord, I love you and I praise you and I ask you for preaching grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you this morning about the two natures. I want to talk to you this morning about the two natures that we have within us. I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about the struggle and the battle that we face on a daily basis. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the fight that we face every single day in life. In verse 17, the Apostle Paul said, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. The two natures here is the Spirit of man and the flesh of man, the nature of man. And these are the two things that battle one against the other. This is the war that we face on a daily basis. This is something that we fight against. This is something that not necessarily we can see. It's not necess necessarily something that we can see with our eyes, but it is something that is going on within our hearts, our souls, and our minds. It is something that is battling all the time. Even when we're sleeping, there's a war going on. There's a battle that we face. There is something that we're going through, and it is nonstop. And I love what he said, that they are contrary one to the other. That means they fight against one another. That means they will never agree. They will never get along. They will never come and be in unity with one another. May I tell you, the spirit and the flesh does not go together. Together. They will never unify together. In fact, they are contrary one to the other. In fact, that's what alienates us from God. That's what separates us from the Lord is that old flesh. May I tell you that the spirit and the flesh has never got along and they never will. And as long as we're on this old earth, may I tell you, we're going to face that battle. Child of God, the battle's real. The battle's today. The battle's tomorrow. The battle is every day while we're living in this old earthly tabernacle. Now I want you to look with me in the book of Genesis chapter 8. And I want to use something a little different today to illustrate the battle that we face on a daily basis. Genesis chapter 8 and we'll just start reading in verse number 1. Genesis 8 and verse number 1. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep, the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventh day of the month upon the mountains of Ariat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. And the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Could you imagine being shut up for 40 days? 
We don't want to be shut up with our kids for two days, much less 40 days in the rain. And they were shut up 40 days. And at the end of the 40 days, he opened the window of the ark. Notice what he said in verse 7. And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. And he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him and to the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him and to the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. Now I want to look at the two birds, basically, that Noah sent out. Forty days he was shut up, and he wanted to see if the waters had gone down. And instead of going out himself, instead of exploring himself, which would have been a very dangerous thing, God led him to do something that, that I believe teaches us a principle today of the battle that we face on a daily basis. He laid upon his heart to send these two birds out at, one, at the same time. And and his desire in God's heart was for uh, Noah to send these birds out to go out to test the waters to see if the waters had gone down. And in this, Noah would know the time that it would be that his family could leave the ark. Now I want us to notice the first bird that is mentioned here. The raven. And this raven represents the flesh and the nature of mankind. Notice what he said in verse 7. And he sent forth the raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. And so the very first thing that he sent out was the raven. This raven represents the flesh. In the book of Song of Solomon, the, the bride spoke of the bridegroom and said that his head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. All through the Bible, the word raven, the animal, the bird raven represents blackness. Black throughout the Bible represents sin. It represents those things that stand in opposition to God. Even in the book of Leviticus chapter 11, if you want to, you can turn there while holding your place there in Genesis. In Leviticus chapter 11, when God gave the law out, God wanted to teach people the things that were good and the things that were not good. Things that were holy and things that were unholy. And in Leviticus chapter 11, he begins to give them their diet. He begins to tell them things they can eat and things that they could not eat. And I want you to remember that the Old Testament is a picture of things to come. All that God is doing is laying a precedence to teach people right from wrong. And so when he says this is wrong to eat, he's simply saying and drawing the picture, this is something something that you do not need in your life, okay? And I want you to look here in Leviticus chapter 11, and it says in verse 13, And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ostrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Every raven after his kind. So he goes through these different fowls that they were not allowed to eat. These things were unclean. He did not want them to devour them. And he says that a raven was unclean unclean to eat. This was something that God stood in opposition with that he did not want his people to mess with. You leave it alone. It's unclean. It's not good for you. Let me tell you something. God knows what is good for you. God knows what is not good for you. And this raven is sent out by, by Noah. And this raven throughout the Bible is a picture of the flesh. It is a picture of our sin nature. It is a picture of that part of us that stands in opposition with the Lord. May I tell you, you didn't have to do anything to receive that nature. When you were born in this world, you were born with a very nature that wars against God. It is our nature. I didn't do anything to receive it, and I passed it along to those three children of mine, and they can thank their daddy for the nature they have, because through the seed of man comes this nature that wars against God, that represents blackness, that represents sin, that represents a life of bondage. And I want you to know that this very life and this very nature 
Scripture stands in opposition with God. I want you to know that God will never agree with our flesh. God is never pleased with our flesh. Our flesh can never satisfy the wrath of God. Our flesh will always stand in contrary to God's Word and God's will. Understand today that God does not accept our flesh. Understand today it is that flesh that corrupts us. It is that flesh that leads us astray. Within you, within me is that nature to love the things of the world. It doesn't matter how godly you think you are. It doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are. While you're living in this whole body, you will have that nature, that flesh for your entire life. And there will be times that you will be tempted. There will be times that you will have that natural desire for the things that are not associated with God. Isn't it amazing no matter how much you read your Bible, you are still tempted by sin? Isn't it amazing no matter how long you've gone to church, the devil still tries to pull you away and you are still tempted and you are still enticed by the things of the world? Isn't it amazing how good God has been to us and we still turn our backs against Him? Do you know why? Because there is that part in us that will always run away from God. Now we'll always turn from him and go and leave. And I want you to notice in Genesis, uh, in Genesis chapter 8 what this raven did. Notice in verse 7, And he sent forth the raven which went to and fro. Understand that he never came back. He never came back to the master. He, his flesh went out. And it, it, he was led astray. Where did the raven go? Well, understand the flood was going on. And all of these beasts and all these people had lost their lives. And I believe that it was a nasty mess out there. And if you know a raven, a raven is a scavenger. And they'll eat on anything. And basically what this raven did is he left the safety of the ark. And he went out to the world and he went to and fro. That meant that everywhere that raven went, it never found rest. Because when you leave God and you leave the ark and you leave your master, you can never find rest. And there's a lot of times that our nature takes us away from God. But when we get away from God, our nature, our flesh, never finds true rest. Yes, that old raven was devouring itself on the flesh. And oh, it was scavenging and it was going here, there, and yonder. And it was filling its belly with all of this mess. But it never truly was satisfied what the things the world can give it. And let me tell you something about your flesh and your nature that you have and I have. It don't matter how far you run away from God, you can go to this world and you can get everything this world has to offer you and it will never fill, truly fill you up. You will always be left wanting more and more and more and more. And when it uses that phrase to and fro, that means these ravens were toiling. These ravens were living in confusion. There was no resting place. May I tell you that our flesh, our flesh nature has no resting place today. I want you to know that our nature runs away from God. You know what happens? Our nature gets in the way. I'm sick of this old nature. Y'all can aid me in something this morning. It's all right. It's all right to wake up. This old nature gets in the way. You know what it is when the preacher's preaching? Oh, man, that's good. Oh, preacher, preach it. Boy, that's a good verse. Man, I like that verse. Man, I like that story. What are we eating for lunch? Aren't you sick of that? Man, you sitting there praying, Oh, God, help my family. Oh, God, help my family. Oh, God, help us. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need that. Man, I wonder what I'm doing tomorrow. Oh, good. Our flesh just takes off. And our flesh gets in the way of us serving the Lord. And our flesh will always war against God. And every time you try to worship, the flesh tries to get in the way. And every time you try to get in here and worship the Lord and praise His holy name, the flesh is going to get in the way. I'm so glad when we get to glory land and that old flesh is taken away that we get to worship Jesus without interruption. We get to pray without interruption. Man, I'll tell you, you want the phone to ring, you just start praying. Every hospital room I go into, man, there, I, we'll talk an hour and the phone won't ring and I begin to pray and the phone will ring. The devil knows what he's doing. 
And there's that part within us that naturally wants to rebel against God and pull away from the Lord. But I want you to know when you do that, there is no resting place. And if you follow that flesh and you follow that nature away from God, there is no resting place for you. But I want you to look at this second one. I want you to notice this dove. While the raven, the flesh, is something that every one of us is born with, not everybody is born with this. Not everybody is born with this spirit that we are given from God. This is the other nature. You see, all you got to do is be born to be born with this flesh nature. But you got to be born again to receive this next nature. Not everybody in this world has two natures, okay? But let me tell you something, as God's people, we do. We've got the flesh and we've got the Spirit of God within us. And I want you to notice what he said here. It says in verse 9, in verse 8, And he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. And she returned unto him and to the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto the ark. What is so wonderful here is the dove came back. The spirit part came back. The spirit part will always come back to the master. Okay? Well, there's this part that is leading us away to God. There's also this part in us that is leading us closer to God. When there's one part of us trying to hit the road to get away from the Lord, there's another part of us telling to go worship Him and go praise Him. And I'm glad and I'm thankful for that part within me. I am so thankful that He bestowed upon me His Spirit and He breathed His Spirit unto me the very day that I got saved. And I'm telling you, I can't run off. I can't just go off and live in the world all the time because God won't leave me alone. While I have this nature that's telling me run from God, I've got another nature telling me you run to God. I've got another nature telling me you're wrong. I've got another nature telling me God's not happy with this. God's not pleased with you. And there he sent this dove out. And this dove, hey, the dove wouldn't go out and, and feed on the flesh and feed on the, the bodies like the, uh, like the raven would because the dove has a clean appetite. He won't just eat anything. Let me tell you something about the spirit within us. That part of us desires holy things. Things that are of God. There's that part with us that just we got to be like the world. We just got to look like them. We got to smell like them. We got to act like them. But there's another part of us that has that true desire to be right and do right. Am I the only one that battles that? Man, I'm telling you, I battle it every single day of my life. There's that part within me that wants to go look like everybody else, and then there's that part within me that wants to look like Jesus. And boy, aren't you thankful for that part that thrives within you and energizes you to that point that you won't be like Jesus. That's who we need to be like today, is be like Jesus. And that, that dove found no resting place in the world. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> Child of God, you can't truly rest in this world. You can't truly rest away from the Father. You can't truly rest away from the Master because there is no resting place in this world. You're different. You've been called out. Let me tell you something. I can't go live any way I want to. People all the time say, well, I'll just turn my back against God and against the church and friend. I can't do it. I've tried it and He won't let me because He won't leave me alone. And people all the time, well, well, I just leave God and I'll be okay with it. Well, if you're okay with it, something's wrong. Because if you're truly saved, it will never be okay. Because you'll never find rest in this whole world. You'll never find peace and joy. Because there is no resting place in this world for God's people. May I tell you, we have a shepherd. And he, we hear his voice and he knows our name. Aren't you thankful today that he'll leave 99 sheep to go find one? Yeah. Aren't you thankful today that He won't leave us alone when everybody give up on me? Everybody said, well, He won't count to nothing. I'm telling you, He's sorry He lowed down. And I agreed, I amen with everything they said except my mama. You better not talk about me in front of my mama. Boy, my mama prayed for me. And I'm telling you, everybody gave up on me but my mama and my God. And my God kept working on me and He kept convicting me. And He kept saying, oh, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to leave you alone. I remembered... 
putting my head down on my pillow, tossing and turning. Oh, no peace. Oh, no joy. Friend, there's no rest outside of the will of God. All the days, all the weeks, all the years, restless out of the will of God. I could never find peace. I could never find joy. I tried to go find every job that could give me the most money I could get. I'd go eat all I could, drink all I could, do everything I could to satisfy my soul. But as a child of God, this world has nothing that could satisfy me. Because I kept longing, I kept wanting. And I just, there's got to be something more. And God would not give up on me. Praise God. And man, I tried everything this world had to offer. And I was still skinny, hello. I was still hungry. I was still empty. It couldn't fulfill me. But when I went back to the Father, when I went back to the ark, when I went back to the hands of the Master, oh, I flew back because my spirit said within me, get back to God. Get back to the Father's house. Oh, you may have been in the whole pen of sin, but your Father's at home with His arms wide open waiting on you. And oh, here, oh, Oh, Noah got out that ark that day. That raven took off. That raven never came back. But oh, the day that that dove came back. Every day that dove came back because that dove found no resting place in this whole world. The only resting place that dove had is when Noah. Come here. I don't know what he did. Whistled, hummed, sang. I don't know. But he stuck his hands out. And that little old dove found no rest in this old world. So he said, I'm going to get back to the boat. I'm going to get back to the master. And that master's hands was out. He said, come on back, I got you. Oh, man. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> oh, his hands are out. And he says, come home, I'll give you rest. Come home, and I'll take that burden from you. I'm meek and I'm lowly. Come learn of me. Oh, I'm glad the Master's arms and hands are open for us today. And I'm glad and thankful for that part within me that won't leave me alone, that won't let me stay in that hog pen. I'll tell you, there's one thing about getting in that hog pen, but there's nothing about staying in that hog pen. It's time to get out, amen? And if you're saved, there's that part within you that says it's time to get to the house. It's time to get right. Aren't you glad God won't leave you alone? Aren't you glad that He works on you day and night? Oh, I'm thankful that He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Aren't you thankful today the Master is still in the ark and His hands are still open and He's still wanting to receive us back? There's no rest in this whole world. Quit trying. Let's quit trying to be like the world. Can somebody amen that? Let's quit trying to feast like they feast. Let's quit trying to look like they look. And let's get back to the Master. And let's get back and just let Him give us rest. There's no rest in this world. Say, person, you will never find rest in this world, but you will find rest in the hands of the Father. Oh, man, you won't. <laughs> hey, He causes me to rest. He makes me to lie down. Hello? It's, it's not that I just do it, but He causes me. He causes us. He makes us when we put our trust in Him. I want you to look in Romans 7 and we're going to be done. Romans chapter 7. I know this sermon is a little different. But I'll tell you, when I got on that and I looked at when that dove was flying home back to the Master, and that dove was going home because there was no rest to be found in this old world, Man, I got to thank Him, bless God, praise His holy name, that I can't find rest in this old world. But I can rest in Jesus. Y'all hear me, God's people? You can rest in Jesus. You're tired and you're wore out. You've been beat up by this whole world. I'm telling you, you can rest in Jesus. I'm telling you, when everybody else has given up on you, God had not given up on you. The Master's got His hands and His arms wide open. Boy, I preach that all day. I love it. Man, isn't that good? His arms are open. He says, come on home. Come on home. The man that I love with all of my heart taught me in seminary. Son, come in one day, 21 years old. He's a preacher. The daddy's a preacher. One of the best men I know. Son, come in and said, Daddy, I believe I'm, I'm gay. I believe I'm a homosexual. He says, what are you talking about? You've been raised. You've been saved. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? 
boy said, I'm going to Houston. Found him a colony down there. He said, I'm going to go dwell among them. And the daddy said, you listen to me. He said, he told me, he said, Josh, this is the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. He said, because of the stand that I make for the Lord, you're not allowed back in my house till you come back right. But he said, you rest assured one thing. Our door will always be open. And you rest assured one thing. Me and your mama won't give up on you. And every time I see him, I say, how's Caleb? Not yet, but he's coming. Not yet, but he's coming. Not yet, but he's coming. What a war. What a battle that's devouring us. That's devouring our children. That is devouring our families. And this is the battle right here. Romans chapter 7 verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do not, but what I hate that I do, that do I. It's confusing, but that's how the battle is, ain't it? If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There's that nature. There's that part. For I know that in me that is my flesh, there's that nature, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. There's a part within me that's no good. People say, oh, that's harsh, preacher. Don't be so hard on me. It's true. There's a part within us that's no good. But if you're saved, there's a part that is good. He said, for the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do... Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into the captivity of the law of sin which is in my mind. What a battle, what a struggle, what a fight. It's real, it's every day. Notice what he's saying. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He finally said, there's a part within me that's sorry and no good and it needs help. Oh, wretched man that I am. Notice what he said. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Where can I find help? Where can I find victory? Please listen. Please, every eye, every eye open, every ear open, listen to what he said. I thank God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, he said, I've got a battle going on that it's real and it's tough and I face it every day. But he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord that there's some victory. I, I bless his holy name that when I find that I'm wretched and I'm low and I'm down, there's a part within me that will win every time if I put my trust and my faith in Jesus. I'm telling you, this whole world is hard. It's hard. It is pressing on our our people. It is suffocating our people. God's people is being suffocated by the world and it's time to stop it. Because there is a place of victory for God's children. And it's through faith in Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad when you come to that place and you're like, oh wretched man, I'm a sinner that you found victory in Jesus. That oh at the very end, I, man there's no hope. With Jesus there's always hope. With Jesus, there's always a way out. And he said, here I am battling this, and I don't know what to do, and I'm fighting, and I'm struggling. But he found out this, if I'm going to win, it's going to be through Jesus. And I found out this, if it's going to be good in my life, it's going to be through Jesus. It's not going to be in me, but it's going to be in that spirit part. There's that one part, running away from God, and that other part pulling us to God. Let's stand. And I want to share something as you stand. Very quiet, very reverent. When I was seven years old, I went before Hyde Park Church and I made a profession of faith. And I got it wrong. I messed it up. I thought I was saved and I wasn't. It wasn't God's fault. It was my fault. I was deceived by the devil. And when I was 13 years old, there was a part within me that was calling out. There was a part within me that was calling out. And I didn't quite understand it at that time. But there I sat with a nature that stood in complete opposition to the Lord.
There is nothing within me that I would desire God, but there is something within me that God desired me. And there I sat in that church on that Sunday morning, that preacher preached tale up and down. He preached Lazarus and the rich man. I remember today. And oh, that Holy Spirit began to reach out. To like Noah, opening them arms. And I'm glad he saved my soul. And I'm glad that day at 13 years old, he put me in the hands of the Father. And I've never been plucked out of that hand. And it's a loving, gracious God that has kept me every day. It's a loving, gracious God that I'm not consumed with sin every day. It's a loving, gracious God that I hadn't been devoured by the old things of this old world. It's the grace of God that dwelleth in me. Aren't you thankful for it today? Aren't you glad that His arms are wide open? I don't know why I preach this message, but God does. And God knows. And may a sinner just tell you today, I'm the chiefest of sinners that found his way back to the boat. That a loving father had his hands out. Oh, preacher, you come from that Bible stock. You come from that good family. I come from the family of Adam. And we're all sinners and we're all turned away. But God gloriously saved my soul. And every time I took off in that world, bless God, I never found rest. But I find it in His hands today. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Master. He knows what He's doing. You answer Him today. If there's that part within you that says it's time to come home, would you come home? If there's that part within you that says it's time to be saved, be saved today. As she plays, you come. These altars are open. If you need to make a decision, would you come?